Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heels. And we're here in the studio today with Diane Fearon from Nathan Adelson Hospice. And we'll get to meet her in a few minutes. For those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we like to bring leaders, movers, and shakers of the healthcare industry right here in Las Vegas into the studio to get to understand their business and what they're doing to improve the quality of life right here in Southern Nevada. Today, we've got Nathan Adelson Hospice, uh, one of the first hospices in the country, Nevada's first, largest, and only nonprofit hospice. And we've got Diane Fearon, the Vice President of Philanthropy and Strategic Partnerships. Good morning. Welcome to the studio. Yes, it's great to have you. You and I have known each other for quite a bit of time. Yes, being involved in the community as you have supported so many things over the years, certainly healthcare oriented. And I've been involved in the community and lived here 39 years. Uh, which almost coincides with the hospice celebrating our 40th anniversary this year. That is awesome. So we're going to learn a lot about Nathan Allison Hospice later on. But what I like to do is get our audience introduced to Diane and get to know you a little bit so they know who they're working with. And just so you know, our audience is made up of physicians, healthcare leaders, community leaders, executives, and those that really just want to uh, advance healthcare, make it a better place for all of us to live, work, and play. A group I very much want to fully support and participate with, as does Nathan Adelson Hospice. So Diane Farron moved to Las Vegas in 1979 from Michigan, was in banking for 25 years. During that time, very involved in nonprofit uh, committees and boards and making this a better place to live for all of us. I've been in nonprofit management for a little over five years and had the pleasure and privilege of being at Nathan Adelson Hospice, running the foundation and our marketing team for the last year and a half. You and I got to know each other when you were a banker, and yes. you banked a lot of the healthcare folks in town. So when you got engaged in the healthcare community, it was wonderful because it wasn't like, who is she? She doesn't know anything about healthcare. You really know the inner workings of healthcare, probably more so than most that are even in the business. I appreciate the fact that knowing the economics and financial sustainability models that have to be achieved is every bit as important for a continuity of sustainable quality of care being available and it's very possible and Nathan Allison Hospice partners with a lot of folks who get that and also know how to utilize hospice as an element to achieving that strong financial high quality of care combination. Well, it's the business of medicine. That's what we need to improve upon. And you spent some time in education as well, which is critical to Las Vegas Heels just because what we're trying to do is improve the quality of healthcare. We know that quality is our quality challenges are caused by access and our access is caused by lack of workforce and that just means we need to produce more providers to get them up through the 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 workforce cycle to deliver care to us so you've got a really broad knowledge and it's uh you you bring a lot to healthcare. so welcome to the healthcare community and welcome to inside medicine here thank you i'm very pleased to be here this morning so let's dive in a little bit nathan adelson hospice we all know it it's our favorite hospice in town you've been around forever and so without me telling the story tell us a little bit about uh, about the background of Nathan Adelson and, and and you're celebrating your 40th year in business. Yes, indeed. We were established in November of 1978 and Erwin Malasky is the founder. That's a name we all know. <laughs> and appreciate and have benefited from, from living here in this community. What he has been a part of making available to all of us really raises all boats. Uh, And Nathan Adelson was the first administrator at Sunrise Hospital and a dear friend of Erwin Malasky's. Sadly, became ill with stomach cancer in 1977 and didn't have a good end of life journey and experience so that that prompted Erwin Malasky and a number of other community visionaries and leaders to take a look at what can be done, what should be done, what was, must we do. And the hospice model had really been established in London, England in the 1960s and was starting to become known in the United States in the 1970s. We were at the forefront here in Southern Nevada as still a little bit of a frontier community almost in the 1970s to go ahead and as a nonprofit get that established and help folks have a good experience 
at the end of life. So Erwin Malaski, I think we've got a photo here. It looks like this is from the original uh, the, the original building over on Swenson. Oh my goodness, yes. And Erwin Malaski is the second person as I am looking at it from the left and certainly uh, an incredible community builder in so many ways and the visionary around hospice uh, is something that we have all had great advantage and, and benefit to have put in place. He's made his mark and has done so much for healthcare in Las Vegas. He's uh, done amazing things. And I know Nathan Adelson wouldn't be here without Erwin Malaski. And it's that's very true. Yeah. So let's dive in a little bit more. So you weren't the first in the United States, but you were the first in Nevada. Absolutely. So that, and it was important to our board of directors to establish a nonprofit hospice organization and that is how we operate today. We have a separate foundation, that's the Nathan Adelson Hospice Foundation, that helps support the hospice operations because it wasn't until 1982 or 83 that Medicare started paying the cost for care of hospice, yet we were already here reaching out, supporting, and helping folks at that critical and vulnerable time. Just a funny side story, and I don't know, that a lot of people don't know this, when I, I, from what I understand, this is third-hand knowledge, but uh, when Nathan Allison Hospice was open, they didn't actually have a license for a hospice for a building. So they licensed it as a hospital, and it later on made front-page headlines that it had the highest death rate <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> and it made all these headlines. Everybody went, well, of course, <laughs> that's a place where people go to live out the rest of their lives. That's yes, kind of the yes. natural thing there so it's uh, they quickly corrected that and I do like to think we've come a great distance in knowledge and understanding and embrace of what hospice is but I don't know that we're all the way that we need to be I had the chance to visit with Frank Martin and Martin Harris was Another the builder, builder. <laughs> certainly of our inpatient unit uh -huh. and he talked about the struggles of getting the licenses and the permits for the hospice because of it not being understood what it was yep. and that the messaging around that that. When I visited with Frank just a couple of weeks ago to have him share some of his memories from that important time of the early 1980s, he mentioned and shared beautifully that the meaning to him at the time was certainly understood and an honor to be able to be the contractor for the hospice. And then in 2007, in that same building, we cared for his mother uh, and he and his wow. family were there and how meaningful and how coming full circle that was for him. Yep. And that is one of 70,000 stories because that's the number of patients and families we've served since the hospice was established. I choked up a little bit there. It's, uh, that's amazing because I know so many folks that uh, Nathan Allison Hospice has done amazing work for. So it's the list goes on and on. And I think if you look at your supporters, it is the who's who in Las Vegas. So for those that may not have a firm understanding of what hospice is, there's a lot of different perceptions of it. I think those that have experienced it have a different perception than those that don't know about it. Give us the Nathan Adelson hospice approach to what is hospice? Hospice ensures that our vision that no one should end the journey of life alone, afraid, or in pain is able to be achieved. It's a combination of medical care, emotional support, spiritual support, and complementary cocooning of therapies and comfort for patient and families. To be medically qualified for hospice service, it's determined that a medical professional would estimate life expectancy of six months or less. That's an inexact science. Though 98% of the families where we've served a loved one and cared in their final days say they wish they had signed on sooner, we unfortunately probably work with folks in supporting them only the last 60 days of that time period. And when you have a life-limiting illness that a medical professional has diagnosed, it's important to determine what are the patient's goals of care and then let's respect those priorities and let them be able to make choices about what's comfort for them, what's important to them, what, is, what does it represent for them to realize when 
science can't add more days to their life, that we're adding more life to their days. So the hospice continuum includes a lot of different touch points. Many people associate it with the inpatient unit. We do have two of those facilities available that are somewhat like hospice hospitals, Mm -hmm. where there's a greater need for pain and symptom control and management, and that's a total of 38 beds. Today, as we are talking here this morning, we're caring for almost 360 patients. So it's happening in the home so most of it's done where at people home. live. Yeah, that's got to be a better place to spend your final days. That's the preference of yeah. patients and families. And the support system of hospice makes that possible with comfort and dignity. It was amazing. The, the last time that I went into the hospice, this was the physical building, there, there were massage therapists. Yes. There were therapy dogs. It was just people caring and it was a happy place because everybody was spending the last days with their loved one and everybody was there to comfort them. So tell us a little bit about some of the unique services that Nathan Adelson Hospice offers. Maybe some that the others don't. There's a lot of hospices in town, but there's stuff that makes you all unique. Touch on some of those. The complimentary therapies program umbrella includes massage therapy, Reiki therapy, pet therapy, as well as a pet peace of mind program, because so many patients and families feel that their four-legged friends and children are also members of the family. We have the ability to assist in finding a new home should that need arise. We also provide meal delivery to families where there may be a financial circumstance that makes it difficult for them to have food on hand. It may also be a physical frailty obstacle, and we have volunteers. As a matter of fact, in addition to our over 300 staff, we have 330 active volunteers at Nathan Adelson Hospice, and meal delivery is part of that, where we deliver frozen meals that are for a two-week time period, so folks don't have to be worried about things that are the day-to-day when their days are limited. We also offer uh, different families in need assistance through the fundraising that the foundation does. And I've got a couple of stories I'd love to share with you. One of which was we had a woman in our inpatient unit over next to Mountain View Hospital in her mid forties who had an eight year old daughter who was too afraid to see her mom in the hospital. Mm -hmm. That patient, Anne, was being cared for by one of our nurses who had a nine year old daughter and it was around the Christmas season. So our nurse knew what the it gift was for an eight-year-old girl that year. The foundation funded a modest amount to buy the doll that would be every little girl's dream to open at Christmas, had it delivered to Anne's house, all wrapped and gift tagged to Emily from Mom. Nice. Which allowed Emily to come in and see Mom before she passed. And it's because of our staff caring our donors making it possible that we could help in that caring to create something that is just priceless and invaluable yeah. and should be a part of everybody's experience. You know, it's I lost both my grandparents in the last two years. They went through hospice, not here in town. They were in Florida. Uh, but to watch the love and the care that they brought to them during those final days, and I could tell you um, an animal was a part of it. They had a puppy, and they've had this puppy for – it was their child – for the last five years, to, to and they couldn't care for the yes. dog. They took care of this dog, yes. the hospice members did. Yes. And that just, it stays in my mind about how they went above the call of duty when we weren't able to be there. And, and that was amazing. And we've started a new program to even make more support available for the, lugged for, uh, the beloved four-legged children. Brad Garrett had his brother on service with us earlier this year. And in honor of his brother, he funded a new program called Paws for Paul. Okay, And nice. Paul had such a love for his dogs and his fur children that that enables us to be able to provide some additional support with veterinary care, food, and taking care of those members of the family as well so that we do recognize what brings somebody peace and solace in their final days is what's important to us because it's what's important to our patients. So you brought up Brad Garrett. So yes. we have to talk about everybody loves Raymond and Brad Garrett. So yes. he's been involved with Nathan Adelson. He gives a lot to you. I know I think Saturday he's uh, the MC of he your is. doctors and concerts. Yes. 
So how did he get involved? And obviously he's so passionate about it, as are so many others in town, but obviously he carries that national figure. And it was about six years ago when Brad had a very close friend who was cared for by Nathan Adelson Hospice, and he followed up by contacting Carol Fisher, the CEO, and said, what can I do? Carol's a pretty brilliant healthcare strategist and knew that Brad wanted to give back and that would be a gift to him. So that we took advantage of him being able to reach audiences and make connections in a way that other people don't necessarily respond to hospice uh, and that Brad knows what the gift is. And then having just a few months ago, his brother cared for by us here in Las Vegas only strengthened what was already a very deep bond our appreciation of what Brad Garrett brings to us in outreach to the community as well as support is absolutely amazing, extraordinary, and has changed lives for the better for people who know about Nathan Adelson Hospice because of a connection through Brad Garrett. And Brad is one of our volunteers, if you will, who's got more of the marquee attention, but the kind of attachment and bond that our volunteers have to giving back to the hospice has some commonality of it is a gift to them because they want others to have that comfort and that peace at that time in their loved one's lives. So for Carol Fisher to see that. Yes. And to understand that and to leverage that. Yes. Demonstrates what a dynamic leader she is. Absolutely. She has been recognized in this community as one of the top healthcare leaders. You're fortunate to work for her today. Tell us a little bit about Carol and what she does for the hospice. Carol is dynamic, she is innovative, and she understands and messages very clearly two things that I'll touch on now. One is what's most right for the patient is our guiding point of the decision process. Number two, what got Nathan Adelson Hospice over the last 40 years here today is not necessarily what it will take us to go into the next 40 years. The healthcare environment is a dynamic and ever evolving and changing one. We must change with it without losing the core values and the core priorities of what we make available, but our outreach and education to the medical provider community, the general community, to ensure that the healthcare providers we partner with to provide the highest quality of care and an elimination of unnecessary expenses is being done in the most effective way possible, motivates us every day. So talk to us a little bit about the past 40 years. What started out as we need to take care of our loved ones during their final days in a first building down on Swenson that was licensed improperly. <laughs> to today, you've got a couple physical structures. You have a home hospice. What does it look like today? And talk, take us through just a quick trail of the last 40 years. In 1978, as the hospice was beginning and there wasn't a lot of understanding of what hospice was and how to go ahead and license, permit, regulate, and oversee it, we were caring for a, a few folks in their homes because we didn't have the inpatient unit. And it was also all supported by philanthropic dollars donors from the heart of wanting to help others have a better experience at end of life. As we go to 1983, when the hospice unit opened on Swenson behind UNLV with our 20 beds in a beautiful, serene, and as you mentioned, a joyful place. Uh, we, we certainly were expanding the level of service that we could provide. We then established a second West Side inpatient unit, and today that's in a medical office building next to Mountain View Hospital on Tanea that has 18 beds. So that that additional layer of being able to provide an intervention of medical support without having to be in a hospital environment is something of immeasurable value to patients who might have uncontrolled pain or symptoms or might be in those final few days of life expectancy and want to be comfortable and have the family be there, whether that includes the family dog as well or not. But to have gone from caring for what would have been in the early years less than 10 or 20 patients at a time to now caring for 360 patients and families is something we feel great about and yet motivated by the fact that 30% or more of the people who pass away in Clark County every year 
qualify for hospice service and do not take advantage of it. Oh my. So I don't know if you know this and I don't know what the answer is. So when they opened up Nathan Adelson on the campus of Mountain View. It almost looked like a hospital, a hospice in a hospice. And before that, we've always heard of hospital and hospital for specialty sides. Is that one of a kind? I don't know if it is or is not. We're in a separate building from the hospital in the medical office building next door. And as you go in, you will find it to be a serene environment that doesn't have the hustle bustle yeah. of the hospital and welcomes not only patients, but families and visitors at whatever time is convenient for them, for whatever time period is convenient for them, to give them that kind of optionality for spending those moments. Yeah. And so Nathan Adelson is known for doing fun, unique events. I've been to a bunch of these, whether it's a wine tasting, uh, whether it's doctors in concert. I, I don't know if I'll make Saturday. I'm going to try, uh, but I've been to those before in the past. And then you've done these butterfly releases. Uh, and if we could take a look, what, what is the butterfly release? What does that, uh, what's the, 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 the story behind that? One of the historical or insightful ways of looking at the release of a butterfly has to do with Native American uh, lore indicating that that represents the spirit of a loved one who has passed and that releasing that is a celebration of their life and this past year in April at downtown, the lawn at downtown Summerlin, we released 900 butterflies wow, beautiful. that individuals that we've cared for loved ones sponsored a butterfly and in their name and in their honor, they're able to come and actually release that butterfly and see them with hundreds of other people who are celebrating the passing of someone who leaves a void because of who they were when they were here and appreciation for the hospice experience of helping transition them to where they've gone. The butterfly releases are a very special time. And I think I owe you all a second thank you because I live two blocks from downtown Summerlin. I was wondering why I have so many butterflies in our neighborhood. And You this, are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> because they all kind of cluster in the park there. And so every, every day or every weekend we go out there, my daughter and I, and we look at the butterflies and they're beautiful. So thank you. And what they symbolize is also beautiful. Absolutely. Yes. And you do another one, the doctors in concert. Uh, you call it Serenades? Serenades of Life uh -huh. is, in fact, this Saturday. And there are still tickets available. And I will be looking to see you on Saturday at the Smith Center. There are a number of physicians, including one of our board members, Dr. Ed Kingsley, oh, yeah. who We've... is an extraordinary medical professional, oncologist, top of the game, in addition to which a classic rock and roll band member mm -hmm. in a band called Altered Ego. They will be one of the performers uh, this Saturday at the Smith Center. We actually honored Dr. Kingsley at our uh, Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards a couple years back, and just an amazing, amazing man. He's done so much for this community, and obviously Nathan Adelson attracts some of the best because when you hear these names, y'all, every there's one point in common, and that's Nathan Adelson Hospice. And I appreciate that, and we do know that we have to continue to earn that trust of our supporters, of our patients, and we do that every day in how we show up and how we outreach. I'm going to spend a little time. You talked about 30% of people don't utilize these benefits. Can you tell us a little bit more detail about that? You know, how is hospice paid for? Is it a covered benefit? How does one go about getting to that? Um, Nathan Adelson Hospice has Medicare as our largest uh, payer for hospice services, and Medicare and Medi Medicaid cover hospice care. Private insurance covers hospice care. For folks who are uninsured or underinsured, our hospice foundation raises $3 million a year, and we provide $2 million in uncompensated care and other support and program services to ensure that nobody who is a community member here is turned away, and they're given the exact same care and support. So that the misunderstanding of hospice is folks think, I can't afford it without asking about it, and, and that's something we very much want to move the needle on and have folks know that when they're experiencing a life-limiting illness time frame, to talk with their doctors or even contact us directly. And we can go ahead and consult with the doctor and ensure that an evaluation is done. 
if somebody has a chronic illness that may not be in that six months or less time frame, there's also a palliative care program that is generously underwritten by Elaine Wynn, and it is the Elaine Wynn Palliative Care Program that's designed to provide some additional support that is not everything that's included in hospice, but that helps patients and families manage chronic illness and what can be a confusing time. So often we hear the terms hospice and palliative used together. It causes confusion for a lot, including myself. What is the difference? One way of thinking about palliative care is a serious chronic illness that might be lead to an expectation of two years or less life expectancy based on statistics. Got it. You would benefit from additional support, but it's not that six months expectation or less to go ahead and bring in every layer of support so that that's one way of thinking about it. And doctors at uh, certainly the medical providers at Nathan Adelson are able to help distinguish which is the better match. We get referrals that might be for hospice and end up perhaps putting them on the palliative care program because that's where it's more appropriate. We also get referrals for palliative that after talking with patient and family, they really do qualify and would benefit from having the greater host of support and services uh, of hospice care so that our folks can and want to be able to help when there's a question for somebody who's got a chronic serious illness of any amount. Got it. And to dovetail I know Nathan allison has been very involved with graduate medical education. You've created a fellowship around yes. palliative care, which obviously is a growth area. Um, and, and palliative and hospice, we have one fellow in place right now, and we are searching and have the ability to bring on another fellow as well because that specialty training and knowledge is very important to this community and something that we are pleased to be able to invest in. It further demonstrates Nathan Allison's hospice commitment to the community, the growth of medical education, the growth of health care, making sure that we're all taken care of during our final days of lives. We can't thank you enough for that. Uh, our show's about ready to come to an end. Ow. Is there anything that we should have talked about that we did not, that we could real quick? I appreciate the fact to bring attention to what we view at Nathan Allison Hospice as the misunderstanding and underutilization of hospice. I would say that for more information, feel free to visit our website at nah.org or call the hospice at 702-733-0320 and learn a little bit more about what's available to you. I would want people to know when they're facing serious illness of a life-limiting nature, they don't have to do it by themselves. We are here to help. We're here to help the whole community. And congratulations on meeting a 40-year milestone. And hopefully 40 years from now, you and I won't be sitting here, but others will be talking about the last 80 years. So absolutely, thank you for being on the show. For those of you that uh, did not catch it today, you will be able to find us on our YouTube channel. We will broadcast this out on Facebook, as well as inside of our newsletter, Heals Headlines. And we look forward to seeing you next week here at Inside Medicine. Thank you so much.